What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W, and today we're going to tackle question four in the eighth grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We're trying to find out which of our answer choices is an irrational number. So in order to do this question or a question like it, we need to know about rational and irrational numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just giving a brief introduction to what a rational versus irrational number is. A rational number can be written as a fraction with some integer in the numerator or the denominator. Now, if you remember, an integer is just a positive or a negative whole number, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. If I can make a fraction with any integers in the numerator and denominator, and it can come out to equal the number that I'm looking for, then it's rational. Whereas irrational is the opposite. I cannot make a fraction. So for an irrational number, I will not be able to do this. I won't be able to have a fraction with integers in it. Using this framework, we're going to go ahead and knock out our answer choices until we, until we figure out which one is correct. Um, and I'm actually going to start, I'll start at choice A, 4 pi divided by pi. Now, if you know uh, your rules of fractions and dividing out factors of numbers in your numerator and denominator, you know that we can just say pi divided by pi is gone, and this is just 4. Now, any counting number, any natural number or whole number, we consider to fall under this umbrella of rational because we can say it's 4 ones or 4 wholes. So that can be written as a fraction, so that's fine. Choice B is next, and it says the square root of 6 squared. Now, this is also known as the square root of 36, because 6 squared, or 6 times 6, is 36, also known as just 6. And again, I can make that 6 ones, or 6 wholes, and prove that it's rational. Now for choice C, the square root of 18, this one looks a little iffy, so I'm going to come back to it. Now choice D, 21 and 989 thousandths. Now the fact that I said 989 thousandths should tell us that we can write this as 21 and 989 thousandths. And since this is a fraction, I actually know that choice D can be written as a fraction as well, a mixed number, but still, I'll count it. So A's gone, B's gone, and D's gone. So now we come to choice C, and this is where I wanna get into the two most likely culprits of irrational numbers. So the two biggest places you'll find irrational numbers are numbers like pi. There's two that you'll come up with later on called phi and E. Most things involving any of these numbers are going to end up being irrational. Choice A wasn't, but that's only because we could divide pi by itself. The other place is the square root. Now, if we take the square root of any non-square number, so any number that's not 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on, then we know we're going to get an irrational number. Square roots of positive numbers in zero will either give us integers or will either give us whole numbers or they're going to give us irrational numbers. Since the number 18 underneath this square root is not a square number, its square root is going to be irrational. 